Dear colleagues, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this evening's lecture. Our speaker tonight is Dr. Agatha Dobot, who has a double affiliation. She's a member of the Archaeological Research Unit, as she works as a researcher for the Settled and Sacred Landscapes of Cyprus, a project coordinated by Athanasis Vionis. And at the same time, she's a postdoctoral researcher for the Paphos Agora project of the Department of Classical Archaeology at the Institute of Archaeology in Jagiellonian University in Poland. And she's working on the publication of the Hellenistic and Roman transport amphora and utility ceramics excavated at the Agora sites in Paphos. Dr. Dobot has a master's degree in both classics and archaeology from the Jagiellonian University. And in 2013, she received her doctorate from the same university. Her thesis focused on transport amphora from the Hellenistic period. As a doctoral student, she received several scholarships, including the Scholarship for Excellence at the Jagiellonian University and the Scholarship for the Best PhD Candidate at the Jagiellonian University for the Faculty of History. She's an integral member of the Polish mission excavating the Agora of Nea Pavos under the direction of Evdoxia Babucci, and she's the director of a project entitled With Dionysos and Hermes in Ancient Nea Pavos, Transport Amphorae and Their Contents in Regional Production and Economy of the City in the Hellenistic Period. This project is financed by the National Science Center in Poland. As an expert on transport amphora from the Hellenistic period, she has also taken up the study of such material from various field projects, including the excavation at Suskiu Laona by the late Edgar Peltenberg and the excavation of the House of Orpheus by Dimitrios Mihailidis. Dr. Dobot has published a number of papers in academic journals and has presented her research in international conferences. Today, she's here to present us an overview of her research project in Nea Paphos. The title of her lecture is hidden in the shadow of the stamps, discovering the variety of, uh, and the economic importance of Hellenistic transport amphora in Nea Paphos. Okay. Good evening. Uh, I would like to thank Professor Vasily Kikasianidou, the director of the Archaeological Research Unit, for her invitation to present my research. This research is conducted within a project with Dionysus and Hermes in ancient Neapaphos uh, by the Jagiellonian University Institute of Archaeology in Krakow, Poland, uh, under my direction. The studied objects are Hellenistic transport amphorae discovered in ongoing excavations in Paphos at the sites of the Agora, Malutena, and the House of Orpheus. The project has been accepted by the director of the Department of Antiquities and it is financed by the Polish uh, National Center of Science. This research is in progress, therefore my tonight presentation concerns the current stage of work rather than the final results. The Hellenistic period in Cyprus began at the end of the 4th century BC with the conquest of the island by the Ptolemies. It put an end to the fragmentation of the island uh, into kingdoms, leading to the emergence of a single centralized model of governance. The end of the Hellenistic period in Cyprus came with its capture by the Romans in 58 BC. Neapaphos was the most rapidly de developing polis uh, on the island in this period. It was founded at the end of the 4th century BC. Construction of a modern, huge, and well-protected harbor and the greatest attribute of the town being its location on the eastern Mediterranean trade routes definitely opened the town for external contacts. From the end of the 3rd century BC, it became the most important of the island's polis from a military and economic standpoint. Its economic importance is attested by the discovery of a rich variety of transport amphorae coming from both Cyprus and other production centers across the Mediterranean and the Black Sea region. Transport amphorae, as you probably know, but just to, just to repeat again, transport amphorae of the Hellenistic period are large clay vessels generally characterized by, by a bulgy body narrower neck, two handles, and pointed base. 
Their shape is strictly connected with their function and is designed to facilitate their carrying and loading on ships. These vessels were mainly used as containers for transportation on, of consumable products on the sea. Transport amphorae were widely produced during the Hellenistic period across the Mediterranean and the Black Sea area. Amphorae of different production centers vary in fabric and shape. In some production centers, selected amphorae were marked, marked by either one or more stamps, usually situated on the handles. These stamps often contain of a name of an eponymous archon, a name of the so-called producer or fabricant, who possibly was either the owner or the manager of an amphora workshop, an emblem of either a state, repeating the one on the coins, or a workshop, and some stamps additionally contain of an ethnicon indicating the place of amphora production. And here we can see two um, Rhodian stamps, the upper one and this one. Uh, on the upper stamps uh, there is um, a name of uh, eponymous Archon and uh, a name of, uh, of a month. And we can see that the emblem is repeated on Ro uh, Rhodian coins. While on the lower stamp we can see an, a name of a fabricant. And uh, in the corner below the sigma there is an emblem which is <coughs> a burning torch. While on the right side there is a Thasian stamp um, where there is an ethnicon Thasian written up and uh, below there is a name of an eponymum, eponymous uh, Archon. The emblem of the Thasian stamp shows a dolphin playing on a triple flute which might be connected with Apollon. Due to the epigraphic and iconographic value of stamps, they have until recently been the main focus of research conducted by amphora specialists. Meantime, studies omitting unstamped vessels, as noted by Lawal, result in overlooking at least 90% of the informative base comprised of transport amphorae. Previous research on the Hellenistic transport amphorae from Neapathos, as in other places, focused mainly on analyzing amphora stamps. About 2,400 complete and fragmentary amphorae have been reported in publications. Stamped handles constitute about 2,000 fragments in this group. Amphorae from the production centers that did not stamp their products as well as a large number of amphorae from the centers that rarely stamped amphorae have been almost completely neglected. A research on trade links of Cyprus, including Neapathos, that was a subject of my doctoral dissertation and was based on published amphora finds, has shown that Hellenistic amphorae of Cypriot North and South Aegean, Phoenician, Egyptian, Punic, and Italian origin, as well as from the Black Sea region, were circulating in Neapathos and the region. The chosen data did not allow for statistical analysis, but as you can see in the chart, uh, the, the round one in the corner, uh, it is clear that Rhodian amphorae predominated among the published amphorae. I did not include them into the general chart because there are too many. They, they would uh, hide the, <laughs> the, the, the remaining data. Uh, although indeed they were produced and exported on a large scale, the, Roman, the Rhodian amphorae, it should be underlined that uh, these amphorae were more commonly stamped than amphorae from other centers. Therefore, analysis focused on amphora stamps results in overemphasizing up to a certain degree the predominance of Rhodian examples over the ones coming from other centers. Further, 
The analysis of the origins and dating of published Hellenistic amphorae found in uh, Paphos and the region resulted in distinguishing of three periods of their circulation. <coughs> During these periods, the range of amphora origins and types was, cha was changing. The first period began in the late, uh, late uh, 4th century and finished towards the last decades of the 3rd century BC. During this period, Cypriot products were commonly present on the Paphian market next to the imported ones. <coughs> Among the latter, the North and South Aegean amphorae played the main role. Um, as we can see, the amphorae coming from non-Greek or non-Aegean centers are, are not very well represented, but it might again um, be not a <laughs> real, not a true picture because they were stamped much more uh, rare than <coughs> than amphorae from from uh, Aegean centers. Um, the second period beca began in the last decades of the third century and finished in the second half of the second century BC. During this period, Cypriot amphorae were not appearing anymore in Paphos. The importance of the North Aegean products declined, while of the South Aegean, but mainly Rhodian, increased. The third period began in the second half of the second century and continued through the first century BC. During this period, the South Aegean amphorae continued to be very common. However, beside Rhodian, that still dominated, Cnidian and Koan included in the chart um, in the group other Aegean in the round chart, were more popular than before. Also, the Western Mediterranean amphorae were more common than previously. Due to the fact that the above statements were only based on published data, which is selective, they need to be revised by research conducted on the full set of excavated amphorae. Answering this need, a project with Dionysus and Hermes in ancient Neapaphos has been undertaken. It aims in analyzing the full set of both stamped and unstamped transport amphorae excavated in Neapaphos exclusively in the Hellenistic <laughs> strata and deposits at the sites of Agora, House of Orpheus and Malutena. It assumes the following objectives. <coughs> First, to analyze the fabrics, shapes, and dating of these amphorae in order to define their origin and characteristics. It mainly applies to the vessels, the origin of which is unknown. Special attention is given to examples of potentially Paphian origin, since Paphian amphorae are mentioned in, written, in ancient written sources, but has not been identified among the archaeological finds. Macroscopic analysis of the amphora fabrics, followed by the petrographic as well as chemical analysis, has been undertaken to achieve this objective. The second objective is to identify the amphora contents uh, through the organic residue analysis. The third objective is to discuss the economy of Neapaphos using the model proposed by Mark Lawal. This model is based on the mutual relation of four factors. The role of the city in the process of exchange of goods transported by sea inside amphorae. Uh, secondly, the directions of the flow of goods contained in amphorae. Third, um, the organization of local production. And fourth, the role of the city in financing the exchange of goods by sea. Due to the need of generating data required by this model, statistical cal calculations will be made using the methods applied by, by, <coughs> by Lawal. For the moment, over 300 fragments, including 33 stamped handles, excavated at the Agora have been collected. Their analysis is in progress. As we see, the proportion of unstamped and stamped examples in this group confirm the Lawal's note that the stamped fragments constitute about only 10% of amphora finds. 
All fragments have been divided into fabric groups. The origin of some of the groups has already been defined based on macroscopic analysis, it means by, by naked eye. Other groups of unknown origin will further be analyzed by scientific methods. For the moment, many fabric groups are represented by a single fragment. The dating of the strata and deposits where these amphorae were found, as well as the characteristics of the shape of amphorae, led to divide them into three chrono chronological periods, early Hellenistic, mid -he middle Hellenistic, and late Hellenistic. This division corresponds chronologically to the three periods of amphora circulation in Neapaphos, distinguished in my previous research. And now coming to amphorae. Uh, the early Hellenistic amphorae are represented by two groups of Cypriot origin and few further groups and single fragments, the Cypriot origin of which needs further confirmation. <coughs> Imported amphorae are represented by the North and South Aegean examples. Of Cypriot amphorae, the Curiot ones constitute the first group. Fragments of rims, handles and feet are represented. Two handles are stamped. Different shape of rims and feet indicates that few morphological types are present in this group. The most common forms of the rim is the triangular one in section seen um, uh, uh, the most, uh, uh, in the most upper cor corner on the left, um, slightly concave inside, and the second one is the downfolded one below. Uh, feet have a form of a hollowed knob of two shape variants, conical and globular. Handles are short in upper part, they bend roundly and are oval in section. Curiot amphorae imported to Egypt and mentioned in the Zenon papyri dated, uh, are mentioned in the Zenon papyri dated to the middle 3rd century BC. They are described as Curiaca keramia. In modern times, they were first described and identified as of Curiot origin by Virginia Grace in 1979 among the amphorae excavated in Curion by the University of Pennsylvania. Since then, much attention was given to further finds of stamped handles, but still there is a lack of a systematic study of Curiot amphora typology and chronology. Only a few completely preserved Curiot amphorae have been presented in publications. One of them, shown here on the right, um, has downfolded ri rim, long cylindrical neck and conical body narrowing to a pointed foot, ended with hollowed more or less conical knob. Some of the fragments from the Agora most probably belong to this type. The second group of early Hellenistic Cypriot amphorae found at the Agora is only represented by fragments of upper part. One handle is stamped. This type of amphora is characterized, characterized by a slightly averted rim and a cylindrical neck. Handles are attached just below the rim, their upper part is short and they bend roundly, and they are oval in section. Amphorae of this type were first described and identified as of Cypriot origin in 2013 by Senor and Senor. The scholars based their studies on the fragments excavated in Alexandria, where they constitute the most numerous group of Cypriot amphora fragments found during the rescue excavations. It is possible that few amphorae found in Cyprus, one in the necropolis is Kender near Napafos, <coughs> as well as one in Marion, shown here on the pictures, uh, represent this type too although there is no fabric description nor comment on the origin provided in publications. Senor and Senor have mentioned that the discussed type of amphora has an ovoid body and a solid conical toy, uh, f uh, foot. We can see these characteristics in the, uh, in the examples from Cyprus. 
Salaminian origin of these amphorae have been suggested by Cancardes Senor and Alcaz based on the interpretation of a stamp with letters Sigma Alpha, which, according to the scholars, might be an abbreviation of an ethnicon of salami, salamis. But other Greek letters, abbreviated names, as well as Cypriot syllabary signs, occur on stamps of these amphorae too. Considering the fabric of the discussed amphorae, I would rather suggest their origin in the Paphos region. This fabric resembles the one of fine pottery of color-coated ware, commonly occurring in uh, Paphos, the local origin of which was first suggested by John Hayes and recently confirmed by Edita Marzetz on the, based, on the base of scientific analysis. This group of amphorae from the, from the Agora will be further analyzed by scientific methods. Paphian amphorae are mentioned next to the Curiot ones in the Xenon Papyri as Paphia Keramia, but have not been identified among the archaeological finds. A third interesting fabric, fabric groups of amphorae is represented at the Agora by only three Hellenistic fragments, a rim, handle, and base. For the moment, it is difficult to attribute these fragments to a certain shape of amphora. The base and the handle fragment have been excavated in early Hellenistic contexts, while the rim fragment comes from a closed deposit dated to the late Hellenistic period. The fabric of these examples, seen by a naked eye, seems to share characteristics with the fabric of amphorae of haste type 1, shown on the right, very common in Paphos in the early Roman period, especially in the 2nd century AD. The local origin of these amphorae was suggested by John Hayes. It should also be mentioned that most of the roof tile fragments found at the Agora in the late Hellenistic and early Roman contexts are made of the same fabric. The origin of our three Hellenistic amphora fragments, accompanying by fragments of an early Roman amphora and the roof tile, will be further analyzed by scientific methods. If the analysis confirms Paphian origin of all of these fragments, it will be a big step forward in our understanding of existence and continuation of Paphian ceramic production through the Hellenistic and early Roman periods. Many other early Hellenistic amphorae, fragments not connected between each other in terms of similarity of the fabric nor shape, uh, have been found at the Agora. I would preliminarily suggest um, a Cypriot origin of uh, many of them too. North Aegean Hellenistic amphorae are represented at the Agora by two stamped handles from Thassos. Uh, and possibly by four fragments of not specified amphora type shown on the right. The Thasian examples belong to an amphora shape characteristic for the 3rd century <coughs> Thasian uh, amphorae, having an ovoid body, short, simple peg foot, and roundly bent handles. Amphorae of the second group have a slightly averted rim and a long, solid handles oval in section. South Aegean early Hellenistic amphorae originating in Samos or Paros, I am not too sure yet, um, Hios, Kos, Knidos, and Rhodes have been found at the Agora. Samian or Parian amphorae are represented by rim and handle fragments. The rim is of a so-called mushroom type. The handles are vertical, attached just below the rim and to the shoulders, and are oval in, oval in section. One handle bears a small circular stalb, stamp containing of a letter phi. Uh, in the Kyrenia wreck, a stamp containing, uh, containing of letters phi yota appears on the handle of a mushroom rim type parian amphora. No other Samian nor parian amphora finds have been reported from Neapaphos. Hian amphorae, 
are represented by rim handle and foot, fr foot fragments. All of them belong to the Hian amphora type, having a straight neck ended with an averted downfolded rim slightly thickened. Handles are attached to the neck and shoulders and are round in section. <coughs> the foot is pointed, conical and hollowed at the bottom. This foot is thickened in the examples of the 4th century BC, uh, while later in the Hellenistic period it becomes more slender. Hian amphorae dated to the 3rd quarter of the 4th century BC have been found in the cargo of Mazotos wreck, excavated by Professor Stella de Maestija. Some of the examples from the Agora might belong to the late 4th century BC amphorae, but some other belong to more slender types dated from the 3rd century BC. Early Hellenistic koan amphorae are represented by rim, handle and foot fragments. The rim fragment is of a mushroom type, similar to the Samian or Parian one that we have seen before. Double barreled handles, roundly bent in the 3rd century BC examples, are present too, as well as a foot with a ring. Early Hellenistic Cnidian amphorae are represented by a rim fragment and foot. The rim is high and sloping. The foot has a form of a pointed heart-shaped knob hollowed below. The shape of both these fragments is characteristic for Cnidian amphorae of the 3rd century BC. The early Hellenistic Rhodian amphorae are represented by two stamped and one unstamped handle, one sloping rim and one foot in the form of a conical hollowed knob. They, rep they represent Rhodian amphora type known, for example, from the eastern necropolis of Neapathos. Middle Hellenistic amphorae are not common finds at the Agora. They are mostly represented by fragments of Rhodian amphorae. At this period, the shape of Rhodian amphora is already developed to its classic form with an averted rim, long cylindrical neck, <coughs> ovoid body ended with a simple peg foot. The handles bend in an acute angle and are round in section. As stated by John Lund, during the 2nd century BC, all Rhodian amphorae were stamped on both handles. Indeed, all of the upper fragments of Rhodian amphorae dated to this period found in the Agora are stamped. A late Hellenistic deposit, a well S173, containing of thousands pottery fragments, dozens coins and metal objects and many other finds, has been excavated at the Agora. It provided a collection of amphorae representative for this chronological period. In this well, the commonest were, uh, the commonest were amphorae of koan origin. They have a slender, almost cylindrical body, ended with pointed foot in the form of a simple knob. The neck is cylindrical, ended with a simple averted rim, and the handles are, are double-barreled. Any stamped koan amphora handles were discovered in this well, but three examples come from other contexts from the Agora. <coughs> Uh, during the late Hellenistic period, many Mediterranean amphora production centers were designing their amphorae based on the koan shape, koan amphora shape. These so-called koan type amphorae, made of various fabrics indicating many different production centers, are well, are well represented in the well at the Agora. Their origin is unknown, but their fabrics will be analyzed with scientific methods in, in order to answer this question. <coughs> Late Hellenistic Rhodian amphorae uh, are the second common group in the well. One upper part is stamped on both handles. Rhodian amphorae of this period are similar to those of the Middle Hellenistic times, but have more conical foot and their handles are slightly, are, are slightly curved and shorter in the upper part. Cnidian amphorae are represented by at least two upper parts, one of which is stamped on both handles with the same stamp. 
Non-Greek amphorae are represented in the world by Tripolitanian and Italian examples. One foot belongs to a tubular type of Tripolitanian amphora. It has a wide, slightly concave neck with a small averted rim, this type of amphora. Uh, the shoulders are hardly marked, the body is cylindrical and it narrows to an empty cylindrical foot that slightly expands at the bottom. <coughs> the handles are small and semicircular. This amphora type is common in other late Hellenistic contexts at the Agora. Italian amphora handle from the well belongs to the Lambolia II type, which has a very solid thickened collar rim, long neck, stepped shoulders, and an oval body ended with a solid peg foot. The handles are attached to the neck below the rim and to the shoulders, and they are oval in section. This amphora is common in other late Hellenistic contexts in the Agora. Also, fragments of amphorae of unknown type and origin have been found in the well. Although it is too early for any firm conclusions, a preliminary comment on the proportions of the late Hellenistic amphorae in the well might be offered. Koan amphorae constitute the most abundant group in this deposit, followed by Rhodian and other less represented amphora origins. The Koan type amphorae of non Koan origin constitute a large group too. If we compare the proportions of late Hellenistic amphorae found in the well with the data coming from publications shown at the beginning, it repeated here in the um, round uh, chart, we can see that there is a difference concerning the occurrence of Rhodian and Koan amphorae. As indicated by the finds from the well, Koan amphorae followed by Koan amphora types are more common than the Rhodian ones in uh, Paphos during this period. If this preliminary remark will be confirmed by further analysis of the whole excavated set of amphorae fr from the town, we might be able to see the different picture of the uh, intensity of the Neapaphos trade connections than indicated by already published finds. It should be mentioned that the late Hellenistic amphorae originating in Palestine and in Egypt, although not occurring in the well, are present at the Agora too. The Palestinian ones belong to the rib pear-shaped amphora type. Although some uh, amphorae of this, stamped, of this type were stamped, no such examples have been excavated at the site. Egyptian late Hellenistic amphorae imitating Aegean shapes are represented by few long and oval in section handle fragments and one straight high and flat at the top rim fragment. They might belong to both types, Egyptian amphora 1 or 2. Summing, summing up, the project here presented answers the need of revision of the already published data concerning Hellenistic transport amphorae excavated in Neapaphos and the region. The full set of amphorae from the sites of Agora, Malutena and the House of Orpheus in Neapaphos is being analyzed in order to define their origin and characteristics and to discuss the economy of the town. The finds from the Agora show that beside the well-known amphora types, many other examples of yet non-identified origin were circulating in the town. Many of the latter, dated to the early Hellenistic times, might, <coughs> might be of Cypriot origin. At least two fabric groups of amphorae found at the Agora are supposed to be produced in the region of Neapaphos. It is especially important, considering the fact that Paphian Hellenistic amphorae are only known from ancient written sources and haven't been, uh, haven't been identified among the archaeological finds. If the scientific analysis confirmed the pre preliminary suggestions concerning Paphian ceramic production, 
we might be able to trace and follow its development from the early Hellenistic to the early Roman period. Preliminary remarks on the proportion of the late Hellenistic amphorae at the Agora indicate that the popularity of Rhodian amphorae shown by published data in fact was lower. It seems that Koan amphorae, barely noticed in publications, played much more important role at that time on the Paphian market. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Are there any questions? I'm, uh, I'm 100% sure that Agatha can also take questions in Greek. That's the best uh, uh, I, I will try. My question may well be a silly one, but. Mm. Mm -hmm. It has to be a certain form, it has to be a certain size and volume and so on. You can get so many subtle variations. Um, Unfortunately, yes. Like you. Um, <laughs> were these, do you think the production centres were deliberately designing their amphorae to be different to everybody else's amphorae so that they would be recognisable, distinctive within the pan Mediterranean I think so. I think so. Although in some periods, like in the late Hellenistic uh, times, for some reason, many production centers in the eastern Mediterranean part, but also further to the west, were imitating koan products. And this, um, this imitation might come, I don't know, from the popularity of koan, koan the real koan amphorae, but it means wine <laughs> rather than amphorae, were very popular and widespread in the whole Eastern Mediterranean at that time. So there are periods um, and cases when one center takes some characteristics of other amphorae. For example, this Kuriot amphorae that I, uh, I shown at the beginning, they also were designed um, on... Um, like imitating the shape of Hian amphorae, of early Hellenistic Hian amphorae. So it depends, but I think that some center centers and in some periods they really produce distinctive products. Mm -hmm. uh, I have uh, two questions. Mm -hmm. First, uh, you from the basket handles from the earlier period to this one and is this a result of copy of, of being part of the Hellenistic world and copying what is the norm or is there a different reason? Mm -hmm. And my second question <coughs> is do we know not in from Paphos you identified from Curion and perhaps Paphos. What about the other areas? Do we know from other sites other Cypriot productions in this period? Uh, answering the first question, uh, um, basket handled amphorae that were very uh, very common uh, and produced in Cyprus on a large scale um, from the 8th century BC until the late classical period, they disappear at the beginning of the early Hellenistic period. But these early Hellenistic finds are very, very rare and... Uh, they even might be intrusive in in contexts, uh, yes. So uh, and uh, and yes, the uh, disappearance uh, is connected with the popularity of Aegean amphorae, of the of the Greek amphorae, that started to be produced. They started to be produced earlier, but at that time and the, at the early Hellenistic period due to the political situation, which is connected with uh, with commercial, with economic situation, 
um, EGN types started to be much more common, um, at least uh, in the um, Eastern Mediterranean. And therefore, some centers, like in Cyprus, we see this uh, change when even um, we don't know if the same centers that were producing basket handled amphorae were uh, continued the production. There was also a political change in Cyprus at that time. That, uh, but uh, for sure, for example, this curiot production, which was new in early Hellenistic product uh, uh, period, was uh, was rather connected with the new trends of uh, of uh, Aegean amphorae. Um, and answering the se the second question, mm, there was, um, but again based only on stamps, there was uh, there is a um, uh, supposition that amphorae were in the Hellenistic period, early Hellenistic period, were also produced in Kitium and uh, in uh, Salamis, but these suppositions are made only on. Uh, based on stamps and on epigraphy, uh, where they linked, like this stamp of the amphorae with letters uh, sigma alpha, for example, these are linked with salamis, but, um, and uh, other stamps are linked, stamps um, written in uh, syllabic signs, key T, written as Kitty, were attributed to Kition, but uh, I personally think that uh, it's not enough, uh, that this information is not enough to to prove that, uh, that there was a production. Uh, the only uh, production centers written in, um, mentioned in written sources are Paphos and Curion. And uh, just to add, because I didn't um, went into these details, uh, there was um, Virginia Grace um, uh, supposed, and uh, she said that uh, maybe uh, some amphorae, but again stamped amphorae that uh, she uh, studied in Alexandria in the Benaki collection, that uh, they they uh, consist of uh, of letters uh, pa phi. Uh, she connected them with Paphian production. Uh, she supposed these might be uh, the amphorae um, mentioned in uh, Zenon Papyri. But um, none of these stamps was found in Cyprus. And uh, also uh, there was a recent um, study of these stamps again by epigraphy, uh, by a person dealing rather with inscriptions than amphorae. But this person um, identified these stamps with um, with pamphylia, with pamphylia. So, and they are, and this path, uh, and, and uh, this, it was Brish who ma made this research, and she uh, found that this. Uh, she thought she, she thinks this puffy uh, is an abbrevi abbreviation of a personal name of a Paphian path a person from Paphos, obviously, and it is uh, also known from other inscriptions in Pamphylia. So it rather seems that uh, that these are not Paphia. Mm -hmm. I think the most crucial question is Cypriot Amphora production, which for which we are not sure, even now. It's uh, the chronology. You are not sure about the chronology. You cannot be sure because uh, when you use the, uh, the Hellenistic, early Hellenistic mm -hmm. uh, uh, data, uh, could be also a like classical. Yes, of course. Uh, this is the mm -hmm. changing the whole picture because late classical is before the chronology. And I think this is a crucial question about it. Those Sanford, if they produce in Cyprus, they are under the Ptolemaic influence or not? Yes, this the, is, I think, uh, the most crucial question about them. It is a very crucial question, but uh, I would like to say that even if this production starts in the classical period, which is possible, it definitely continues to the early Hellenistic times because. Uh, 
fragments, for example, of Kuriot amphorae and of these other amphorae that I showed, I, uh, I suppose they are Paphian, they might be Paphian, uh, they were found in the same context of early Hellenistic date with Aegean products, with these Samian amphorae, Hian amphorae, Thasian amphorae. So definitely they coexist in the town in the same period when early Hellenistic Aegean amphorae were coming to the town. Yes, but the, the shape is completely new. And this is the question. I mean, shape mm -hmm. and it's not Cypriot. No, it's not. Okay. It's not. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we must wonder <coughs> where this shape derives. It was an imitation from the Aegean. In the case of, of Kuriot amphorae, yes, they are based mainly on Hian amphorae. This is what uh, Virginia Grace stated. But it's not, but I. Examples that you to us, uh, especially the bases, are not all of them Aegean uh, inspired. Yes, they are not. So I mean, I agree. I agree. I agree, and this is a question that I am asking myself too. Yeah, it, 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 uh, 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 me personally, I think. Keramia. It was. Yes, but uh, definitely uh, with this term keramia, uh, vessels containing wine were called because uh, this is Zenon papyri. It's a uh, it's a uh, data from the archives uh, in Egypt uh, where there are amphorae containing wine listed, and among the uh, these amphorae there are curiaca keramia, paphia keramia, but also amphorae from Hios and from other centers are mentioned on the same list, uh, connecting with the with the uh, with the storage uh, rooms of uh, of possession of uh, Apollonius. Um, could contain yes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes, so yes. We that. Yes, we cannot. Mm -hmm. and so this is I have one. Uh, you, you, you mentioned and you said that there was a, a, a large uh, imitation of the Koan mm -hmm. type of. Uh, okay, I might ridicule myself here because I mean, it's neither my subject, and I don't. I know I'm, I'm pretty sure I remember it well, but I might be wrong. I think there is an article by Hain uh, studying the structure of the koan amphoras of the fourth century. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they found that there was a, an enhancement of the shoulders, which would make sense when you're loading uh, the amphora. So maybe a preference towards coding the koan would be attributed to its strength of loading rather than any... It might be. Other. I don't know. Might be. It, it, is, it is a very good uh, remark. Yes, yes. Yes, and uh, I know this research by Anno Hein, and uh, indeed uh, it was a simulating, it, uh, simulation uh, that they did, but uh, it aimed into checking where there are weak points of a certain shape of amphora and they found out that indeed the early examples that were very very wide and more um, angular were they were breaking in a certain points so this might also be connected with the development of the shape not only through the Hellenistic period but we see it in all periods so Thank you very much for your attention.
uh, and most probably not, uh, not only for why. Uh, we know that the contents of amphorae is uh, known mainly from written sources when they are, for example, they are mentioned uh, uh, in connection with uh, wine trade. Mm -hmm. But many amphorae were devoted also to transporting olive oil. Mm -hmm. So and these two uh, these products two are the, the most common because they are mentioned in written sources. But the underwater, mainly underwater, you know, this is the...